Man rescued, man make friend, man go home. Really, that that's about it. Hello everyone and welcome to Discussing Trek, where today we're going to talk about the second of four short treks entitled Calypso. Calypso is written by Michael Caban and directed by Olatunde Asansame. Calypso stars Aldous Hodge's craft, whom leverage fans will know as Alec Hardison. Calypso also stars Annabelle Wallace as the voice of Zora. Spoilers. Red alert. All hands stand to battle station. While drifting through space in an enemy escape pod, Kraft is brought aboard the Discovery by a very advanced human-like AI who we come to know as Zora. Not only does Zora treat Kraft for his injuries, but we quickly see that Zora is doing whatever she can to make Kraft happy. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday! We also learn that Discovery has been deserted by her crew and has been waiting in some type of storm for 1,000 years. Wait, wait, what? Cue the mystery that I hope I get the answer to sometime in season two. Longing for home and his wife and child, Kraft asks about the possibility of getting home. At this point, we see this story clearly play into the Greek mythology of Calypso. Though deeply wishing for home, Kraft is thankful for all Zora has done for him and wants to return the favor by doing something for her. Inspired by movies from the long ago, Kraft practices, suits up, and offers up a dance with Zora. What is meant to be a gift for Zora only makes Kraft long for home even more. But luckily, it also makes Zora realize the folly of her plan. Soon after, Zora reveals that there is a fact a way that Kraft can go home. And come on, let's be honest, we have to be a little thankful Zora didn't go all Hal 9000. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. In addition to offering up a modern take on the tale of Homer's Odyssey, it also gives a beautiful look into the things of the long ago, mainly the hollow viewing and cues of the 1957 classic Funny Face, which stars Fred Astaire and Audrey Hepburn. Though seeing Aldous Hodge in the Trek universe was in fact pretty freaking awesome, you have to wonder if he wasn't wasted in this one short Trek. And ultimately, like, what do we think of the references of the long ago? Do they actually aid in the story, or are they just there for nostalgic reasons? What do you think about the second of the four short Treks? Do we like how the showrunners are using the Discovery as a canvas to tell other maybe seemingly unrelated stories? Leave comments or questions below. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, 